So I'm going to give you guys a lesson in uh, Anglic pronunciation because as much as I've written up about how to pronounce it and how many charts I've filled out, it's kind of hard to learn how things sound uh, from just reading. So let's start with the Futhorge, which is the Anglic alphabet in a runic order. And let's pull it aside here. This is the, the fuller version of it that has some dots. The dots are really important. They're the only way that uh, Anglic accents letters. Now there's a lot of these, and they're in kind of an archaic order. But we're going to split them apart and go piece by piece, starting with the vowels here. So there's six major vowels in Anglic. There's U, O, E, A, I, and I. U is pretty much similar to our English U, uh, as in like food. It's in words like dun in English, which means to dim or to darken. Sum, which means some. O. Now, a quick note about this is in English, in modern English, O is more of a uh, diphthong. It's more of O. Uh, it has this U at the end of it, O. And what we want to try to do is get rid of that and make it just a more solid O. Uh, and this is in words like mos. It's not mos, it's mos, which means moss. Or uh, odo, which means or. This next letter is A. And it's, again, in English, we tend to pronounce this kind of sound A. But we want to get rid of that, um, that E on the end and just make it a solid A. It's in words like thre, which means three, seft, which means soft. Uh, and then we have a or a, depending on your dialect region, you can get away with either. That's in words like mak, which means make, man, which means person, kald, which means cold. And all of these vowels here, when they're unstressed, they're pronounced like a like a schwa, like a. Uh. Um, so if these aren't in a stressed syllable, you can get away with pronouncing them uh. These letters here, there is e and i. E is, you know, like our English e sound. And it's in words like mid, which means with. Frith, which means peace. Uh, and this e uh here, is it can be pronounced uh, uh, e, and it's in words like muchel, which means much, a lot, or fir, which means fire. So, our first run in with the dots here, these dots under letters alter the sound. These come from other vowels in Old English that I wanted to represent a bit simpler. So the E with the dot below it is a remnant of the Old English a, or a, as in modern English, yeah. It's that a sound in the middle that we don't really have anywhere else in uh, modern English. And this is in words like red, which means red, or silver, which means silver. You can also just get away with pronouncing this as like a modern English, like the vowel that's in bet, like that eh. So you can pronounce this red, and it wouldn't matter. Then this vowel here is uh, a remnant of the Old English ash, this letter, ah. Uh, and it's in words like fat, which means fat, or slap, which means to sleep, or uh, dag, which means day. And that's it for these vowels. If you notice this little ghosted letter here, uh, that's kind of just showing you if you need to represent other phonemes, other kind of similar vowel sounds like uh, uh, you can represent those by taking a vowel that doesn't have a dot under it, putting a dot under it. And so if you're borrowing things and there's not really a sound for it, you know, it, uh, so let's move on with the rest of these. These are still in kind of a, in, an interesting order, so I'm going to try to organize them a bit more to their sound. 
So here, I got them in a nice, neat grid for you guys. Uh, and let's go over them one by one. I'll tell you which ones are similar to modern English, which ones you have to worry about. So this first letter, if, it's a lot like our modern English F. It makes the F sound a lot of the time. But sometimes, in between vowels, it can make the V sound. Uh, so, word initially, in words like folk, which means people, uh, it sounds like F. But if, if it's in a word like devil, it'll sound like V. That means devil. So, look out for context. Eighth. Now, this is a new letter, so it's hard to wrap your head around. It's th. It's a thorn. Uh, you may see this in Old English, you may see this in Icelandic. It's th. It's not a P, it's not a B, it's th. I put that before the P and the B so I can make that distinction for you. Try to pair this more with th. Because they behave similarly. This is normally th at the beginning of things, as in words like thin. Uh, but in some pronouns, like the, or that, it has the the sound. Also in between vowels, like, as in feather, which means feather. So, this is another one to kind of sort of be on the lookout for. These two change between vowels. P, similar to English P. F, similar to English B. T, similar to English T. D, similar to English D. K, this is K. I did not say K, I said K. There's a difference. Not really, because K in Anglic, is always pronounced K. It is never pronounced S. There's a different letter for that. It's always K. So if you see a C like this, it's K, rest assured. G, there's a little bit of history behind G, but if you see G just in and of itself, it's pronounced G. You can let it behave a bit like F and THE if it's between vowels, uh, to G, which you don't have to do. You can pretty much just pronounce it G and get away with it. But if, if you want to pronounce a word like this, Sagu, which means story or report, you can pronounce it Sagu, Sagu, or you can pronounce it Sagu. Doesn't matter. So, S. It's pretty much similar to English S. Like, uh, I had Seft earlier, S. Uh, but sometimes, like, you know, with some of these letters, it can sound like Z. Uh, this is like in pronouns Z, uh, which means he, she, or they, or in the word Mazer, which means a maple tree. So, you know, be on the lookout for that one too. This is where things get a little bit different. Um, and this letter, is closer to the Latin pronunciation of W. Uh, these are basically just sharpened U's. They're the original U. They're essentially a short OO sound. So if you pronounce OO, if you said that fast enough, it just sound like WA. This V is our WA sound. Then that leaves this to be a new sound. Our W in Anglic is not WA, but it's actually hua. Like, you know, Hank Hill saying what? What? You gotta use that. You gotta use the hua. You can't just pronounce this one wa. It's gotta be hua. I'll fight you on that. It's one of Anglic's quirks. And this is used in words like what? Hu. Those mean what or who. And then our next letter is heh. And that sounds dumb. I know heh sounds dumb, but those are the two sounds it makes. It either has heh, like in the word health, which means half, or h, as in like richt, which means right. So, again, positioning. Basically, make sure it sounds like there's an h there, and it'll be right. This is ma, this is na, this is la. You know how those work. They're just like English. And then R, do whatever the fuck you want. Like, if you want to make it ra, if you want to make it ra, if you want to make it ra, if you want to pronounce it like French ra, like, I don't give a shit. 
If I can tell that there's an R there when you pronounce it, you're doing it right. I'd say there's enough dialects of Anglic that you can just get away with anything. Doesn't matter. So after getting through all those plain consonants, now we start putting that dot that we ran into earlier above things. Uh, so this here is ch. Ch. Uh, and this has some history in Old English where uh, ch got palatized so much. And so we mark that different sound with ch. There's also the cluster sh, which softens it. And then this one here, the G with the dot above it, um, is actually similar to w, in that it is a short version of e. It's y. And this has some history in Old English too, where g, g used to be pronounced more like g. If it was before a, an open vowel, like ga, it would end up sounding more like ga. But if it was before a higher vowel, like e, it would sound more like ye. So ye. I wanted to separate those two pronunciations uh, to eliminate, you know, constantly having to put an i after this. Uh, and just making it ya. So g with the dot above it is ya. And it's basically like our English y. You'll see how we use it in a similar way uh, as I go through this. And if you put a dot under consonants like these, uh, it adds an H, like H, H. And I mean, I would recommend you always do the H, but you can let these go if it's too much, if it's too much to pronounce things like Hramsa, which means uh, garlic or onion, I think. You don't have to do that, you can pronounce it Ramsa. I, don't, I, I, I won't care. So here we'll get into the longer vowels. Uh, and you'll start to see what other things the dots can do. If you put a dot over a letter rather than under it, it doubles the beat of the vowel. Keep in mind that if you see a word like the, uh, let's let's use it. This is not it, as I just pronounced it. If you see a word like this with a dot over this, you have to think of this as it. And let me illustrate that for you a bit better. This is two e's. It. I mean, now it just looks like eat. But let's put an apostrophe between these. And pronounce words like this, e it. E it. E it. These are different syllables. You can hear it, e it. Now, take away that break. E it. E it. There's two beats there. E it. Same thing with the word book. 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 That means book. And it means eat. So that's cool, but you may notice some oddities between you and I. And I'm about to clear those up. So where this comes from is basically you can't put the fucking dot. You can't put the dot over the U. And if you put the dot over the I, it just goes away. And it looks dumb and that defeats the purpose. But luckily, wa is a short version of u, and ya is a short version of i. So we can kind of treat this as if it was a musical note with a dot after it. Uh, this is kind of an extension. So u, e. It's similar to how in modern English we write o or e. It's in the same vein. And in that same vein, you can also use it to construct diphthongs. So I, A, A. And this is in words like tail, which means tail, or brain, which means brain, or fe, which means to join or unite. And then we have ow, ow, and ew in words like Tew, which is the god tear, or treu, which means tree, or throut, which means to tire, to threaten, to make sick. Then there's double consonants, and these are kind of similar to Japanese double consonants, I'd say, in that you kind of pause and strengthen them uh, when you pronounce them. Like before I had the word fat, there's a bit of a 
There's a bit of a buildup, fat, when I do that. And all these are pretty much the same. Uh, the nasals, you know, like man. You just hold the nasal for longer. You treat the nasal like a vowel, you give it two beats. Man. Um, this here is the one oddity out of the double consonants. And that can be pronounced a few different ways. It's either pronounced like a hard k, or as k, or as hus, or as x, as like an English x. We don't have an x. We have cc though. So this word, it could be it could be pronounced book, book, books, or books, depending on you know where you're from. That means box. Fuck. Fox. This means fox. And then we got this consonant cluster. That's a pretty unique thing. Uh, it functions pretty much similar to how uh, this in, in Icelandic functions. And that is this sound. J. As in English, join. The logic behind this is that ch gets voiced by y. If you pronounce these quick enough and fast enough, ch, 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 you end up with j. Uh, and this is in words like edge, which means edge. Who would have fucking thought? So that's all these weird things. Um, then we can go and practice some phrases. So, just to go over a couple things. Remember, this is th or the, if it's in short words like the. Remember, this is not v, this is wa. And remember this, up front, is hua. And that a's with a dot under them, a's and e's with dots under them, are different sounds. They're shorter a ah sounds. So, how do you think this phrase is pronounced? I pronounce it, quat bring the witter. Quat bring the witter. What do you think that means? It means what brings the weather. It means what is the weather like? What's the weather going to bring? This next phrase here, remember UV is just a long U. How would you pronounce this phrase? I pronounce it hu hat thu. Hu hat thu. And it means, what are you called? How are you named? Here's an answer to that question. How would you pronounce this phrase? I'd pronounce it, Ich am Radwolf. Ich am Radwolf. That's a name, Radwolf. It means Council of the Wolf. It's pretty cool. It means Rad Wolf. So remember this is sh, sh. Remember this is oo. How would you pronounce this phrase? I'd pronounce it sprek thu anglish. Sprek thu anglish. What do you think this means? Do you speak English? Here's some answers to that question. How would you pronounce this phrase? I pronounce it Ignisprek Mitchell. This is a negator word. And remember that this is uh if it's in a context like this. Ignisprek Mitchell. It means what do you think this means? It means I don't speak much. And here's another answer to that question. How would you pronounce this phrase? I pronounce it Ixprek non. What do you think this means? It means I speak none. How about this one? How would you pronounce this phrase? I pronounce it expressum. What do you think it means? It means I speak some. Now, this word here, tal, tall used to mean skilled and great used to mean tall. So, tal 
the thine. This is thine. This is thine. Uh, in Middle English, it would be. Uh, and this means your. How would you pronounce this phrase? Bedin tung tal. Bedin tung tal. What do you think it means? It literally means, is your tongue skilled? But what it actually means is, are you fluent? So, this last phrase here. How would you pronounce this phrase? I would pronounce it, Kutal bedin tung for English. What do you think that means? It means how fluent are you in English? Now what should your answer be? Nimitzel. Not much. <laughs>